So now that we've established a strong evolutionary history of the domain Eukarya, we can actually get into the most diverse part of that domain, which would be the protus. And in this first video, which we'll entitle Protus Intro, we're going to understand the basic premise behind what the protus structure is all about, what these organisms are in terms of their relevance to the domain Eukarya. Protus um, if you look at the name, you can actually get a, a very good understanding of what they refer to. The name literally defines itself to the very first, and you can put that in quotes. The very first. They were the very first, not organisms per se, but the, definitely the very first eukaryotes, and we'll write that down as first eukaryotic cells. And they evolved about 1.5 to 1.6 billion years ago, just to put into a time perspective. 1.5 to 1.6 BYA for billion years ago. If we remember from our origin of life study, the first forms of life evolved about 3.5 billion years ago. So it goes to show that the eukaryotic evolution that I covered in two flowcharts took uh, nearly 2 billion years for it to happen, um, if you see the difference between 3.5 and 1.5, and thus it's important to recognize the amount of time it took for protus evolution to happen, for eukaryotic evolution to happen, did not happen over the course of two flowcharts as we uh, looked at in our previous two videos. So that gives us a good perspective in terms of the protists. They were the very first, and they evolved uh, quite recently in terms of overall origin of life studies. In addition to this introduction, I also want to mention the fact that protists, because they're so diverse, they also have um, an enormous uh, structural and functional diversity. So now we're actually putting some labels to why they're so diverse, and that's uh, in part due to their structure and function two things that are absolutely critical in understanding any biological structure, function, uh, organism, whatever it may be. Enormous structural and functional diversity. So these two things usually go hand in hand and that is the same story for protists. What we most of the time notice is that protists are uh, going to be unicellular and we'll put mostly because the majority of these organisms are unicellular, but that does not mean that others of this protus group of organisms, some of them are also going to be colonial, and some of them also are going to be multicellular. So it's very interesting to see that we have an entire group of organisms that can range from unicellular all the way to complex multicellular organisms. This colonial middle ground is just a large collective group of unicellular organisms that stick together, thus the name colonial. And multicellular would be an actual structure that has a, a different systems that are working together, which we'll see when we study the protists that exemplify the multicellular structure. So as you can see from just the cellularity, we already have three forms of diversity. And finally, um, in terms of structure and function, we can talk about the variety of nutritional strategies. Variety of nutritional strategies. This is a good way to classify and understand protists because, again, the whole point of life, let's say, is to survive and reproduce. Part of the survival of protists is to eat, is to look at their nutritional strategies to understand how they eat. Now, in terms of what this nutritional strategy encompasses, we can state that uh, some of these protists are photoautotrophs. They use light to make their own energy, let's say, to make their own food. Uh, some are photoautotrophs with those chloroplasts that we alluded to in our plastid understanding. So they have the chloroplast. Some of them are heterotrophs. So we'll say some are heterotrophs. And these heterotrophs cannot use the sun to make their own forms of energy, but instead, these heterotrophs are ones that are going to uh, ingest. So these are individuals that ingest organic molecules. And this is essentially what we do as well, but on a much, much more macro scale. This is on a much more microscopic scale, these heterotrophic protists. And finally, in order to really drive home this point of being so diverse, this group of organisms, um, we actually also see that others are mixotrophs. 
And the name is exactly what you're thinking in terms of what it means. Others are mixotrophs that can combine photosynthesis and heterotrophic capabilities. That combine photosynthesis and the, the choice between these is usually based off of the environment present. Whether or not there's a lot of light, whether or not there's a lot of organic molecules, and etc. Uh, combined photosynthesis and hetero, we'll call it heterotrophy. Uh, and that covers our introduction to protists. We're going to get into much, much more details, uh, and we're going to name some protists, classify those protists, the unicellular, the colonial, the multicellular, the photoautotrophs, the heterotrophs, the mixotrophs, whatever it may be. Um, this is just a broad understanding of how diverse protists are. We're going to get into that diversity in much greater detail in the next couple of videos.